Neil, can we get this one out of the way first in terms of uh, Kieran Tierney and um, is it starting to become a bit of a distraction for, for the club and for him? Um, well, certainly not a distraction for you know us and the players. I'm sure it can be unsettling for Kieran as we've touched on before. And you all know the situation that um, you know the, our, the club's valuation of Kieran has not been met, and until then we don't have a discussion to to make really. Do you foresee Arsenal coming in again? You need you ask the wrong person, Luke. You need to ask Arsenal that. Would you be surprised if they didn't? Again, that's a hypothetical question, so I can't answer that. I don't know. Arsenal's financial state is, and I know what ours is, and we are quite comfortable with the situation at the minute. Is the talks ongoing, or is it just waiting to see what happens next? Again, I, I don't know where we are, but we know there's been a second bid. The bid's been rejected, and it's as you were. Does it show what people think of the player, though? The fact that I think the bid itself is probably the biggest ever been bid for a, a Scottish footballer. Well, we know he's a great player and he's a great talent, and. At 22, he's already achieved a hell of a lot in his career, and he's got so much more to to give to the game. But uh, it doesn't surprise me that there are potential suitors out there for a player of his quality. But you know, he's our he's our player. He's on a long-term contract, and um, you know, while it's a backhanded compliment for all the work that the the people here have done over the years with Kieran, you know, we don't want him to go. Just try and you know settle and concentrate on. On the here and now, you know, don't look too far ahead, and you know, don't get your hopes up or your hopes down. You just, you know, try and stay level with it and get yourself fit. Because at the minute he's in the middle of his rehab. Because of the, the English window being at a different time, does that help you in a way, or does it? Hurry? Not really giving it much thought. You know, again, it's not our problem. Look, it's it's a club we're interested in. Our player, they've made two bids, and we've rejected both the bids. So whether they come in again or not, I can't answer that. I know you updated us on Friday with regards to Kieran's fitness and rehab, how is he just now? He's just out on the grass at the minute, he's still you know, a few weeks away from you know, joining him with the rest of the team, but um, you know, it's a slow burner, but we're pleased with the progress he's making now. Is that always the time scale expected? Or? Well, he's, he's, he had a few ongoing issues you know, off the back of, of last season, obviously the double hernia and then the, the pubis problem as well, which can you know, cause a lot of discomfort and um, we're just working, he's working his way back through that at the minute. You have a good lead going into this second leg. Is it an easy approach for it? Just go out all out again and try well, and win? Go out and try and win the game and you know, not be complacent and uh, show the respect that we showed Sarajevo in the first leg. Uh, it was a good game, good game from our point of view. We played well and you know, we can't take any opposition lightly yet in this competition. So. It, well, it's a it's a nice lead. It's uh, the tie's not over yet. So, again, you know, it's another step forward for us in terms of where we want to be in terms of getting the game under our belts, and, and hopefully we can be sharper and fitter than we were this time last week. The other players come into your thinking now, given some got minutes, some of the new players got minutes under their belt against Ryan. Yeah, it was good. You know, it's important that you know the likes of Griffiths and, and Julian, uh, Morgan. You know, they all got you know good run out, and they will benefit from that. So obviously they come into our thinking for tomorrow. Neil, I know he hadn't been back at the club yet last Friday when we spoke to you. Have you had the chance to speak to Olivier? Yes. Was, or has he spoken to you? Yes, we've had a chat, yeah. Has he apologised for his comment? Well, he was disappointed with the way it was sort of came across. That wasn't his intention. So we've had a, a nice chat, private chat, and it's no issue now. So he's back in with the group and training and getting ready for the season. It's a case of putting that behind you and he's very much part of your plans going forward. Absolutely, yeah. How long will it take for him to get up to, to speed? To Shouldn't take long, you know, he's he's what he's only had two and a half, three week break, you know, and he was playing in the, the Euro under twenty ones championship. So, you know, that was his first day yesterday and he looked in, in re reasonable condition. He obviously he's got a little bit of work to do but it shouldn't be too long. Hopefully we'll have him available for next week. Julian was on the bench last week. Is he up to speed? Do you feel he's now match fit? Well, he had, um, what do you have, 55, 56 minutes on, on Saturday. So, again, he'll come into contention, but you know that's his first run out since the end of May. So, he just maybe need a little bit more sharpness and, and match fitness. Neil, we're just speaking to Christopher there, a player at right back, filling in there for you last week. Is, how, how's the process going on bringing in the defenders in that position? Yeah, we're working away, you know. Um, the right back is uh, 
it's sort of like a really difficult position to find. You know, we've been looking for a long, long time. So we're still, you know, plenty of options, and we're still working away in the background to try and bring one or two in. We definitely want to bring two in, and um, you know, hopefully we can bring one in the sooner the better of the of the right quality. So the process is still ongoing. So does that mean we'll like to see Aya and Chris Ross play it way back for the meantime until you bring these targets to the club? Well, he's playing there at the minute, but it's not ideal. Obviously, we know Chris is um, one of our preferred centre halves, but he's a good player that. He's so versatile that um, he can play in a number of positions, and yeah, like I said, short term, he's he's doing a very good job for us in that position. We're hoping to bring these targets in earlier in the summer before we we'll see these crucial European qualifiers, rather than having to put you know round holes and square pegs and things like that. Yeah, but it's easier said than done. You know, clubs aren't going to you know do business. A lot of clubs aren't even back. But you know, by the time we're back, so in an ideal world, theoretically, it'd be lovely to have a a full squad to pick from, but it's it's not realistic, and that's not the way things work. Has it been a case of the right back? There's been targets you've missed out on, or is it more of a case of no, no? It's just identifying the right one, making sure we get all our eggs in a row with it, and at the right price as well. Obviously, some we've got priced out of, or we felt it was too much money for some players, and you know, again, there's it's no panic. But ideally, you know, if we make it through this round, we would like to bring. One or two more players in for the second round. If we do that, uh, you've spoken about um, the team being more, wanting the team to be more purposeful in attacking play. Um, do you see a strike partnership between the Griffiths and Edward as potentially being part of that plan? Going forward, yes, of course, they're two very good players. You know, when you know Griff gets a bit more up to speed, that's obviously an option, a nice option that we have. You know, two quality centre forwards. Lee's worked very, very hard and. It was great to see him out on the grass, you know, on on Saturday. And I thought for 30, 40 minutes he was absolutely superb. Obviously, he tired with the, you know, his first run out for a long, long time, real run out. And um, you know, he's he's a work in progress in terms of his fitness. But we were delighted to have him back and involved in training again. Do you think it'll be a bit of a um, sort of balance to try and get uh, not to stop uh, Edwards momentum, but maybe get? In terms of leaving odds and out, you mean? Or? It's not really something that would would envisage. You know, I mean, Odson's he's been fantastic in in the three four months I've been here, and there's more to come from him. You want to keep him going. Um, he's in a good place at the minute, and he's scoring goals and important goals for us. So uh, it's not ideal to maybe leave one out and play the other, but that that may come with having to balance the squad or rotate the squad and. Once Griff is up to speed and bio, for that matter, they will feature. You know, seeing you see transfers down south, you know, fifty million pounds for a fullback from Crystal Palace, things like that, and then you see Arsenal squatting over what Celtic team do need to be worth. Do you feel like there's a sense of frustration or even disrespect to their valuation? I think I think disrespect is strong, um, but I do feel that you know our valuation of Kieran is is correct. You know, we can't. Um, can't do anything about what clubs the clubs do in, in England. You know, fifty million for Wambasek is a is a lot of money and we feel that Kieran's a far more experienced and more rounded fullback at this juncture of his career. So he's an asset for us and you know we do have a value of the player and we rate the player very, very highly. So disrespectful I would say is the wrong word, but um, we're not going to be certainly pushed over in any negotiations. We're in a strong position on a lot of our assets in the team. Would it be fair to say that Celtic are very aware of the perhaps inflated market in South and where the talents of Celtic should be worth as much as that? Well, I mean, some of the players who have left here in the last few years have gone on to do alright in the Premier League. So we, we think we know what we're doing in terms of developing players. And do we believe that they can play in the English Premier League? Of course, but we don't want them to play in the English Premier League. We want them to play here and in the Champions League for us. When you've got a player of that calibre, is it a case of you maybe just resign yourself that one day he will leave the club, or are you hoping that you know he could be here for years and years to come? Yeah, he loves the club, Kieran. I'm sure if if he was to leave, it would be a big wrench for him personally. Um, sometimes there is an inev- inevitability about players moving on at any club. Well, you know, Man United ended up selling Ronaldo. You know, the biggest club in the world. Everyone has their price, so it's no different for for us at times. 
you set any sort of return date for him injury wise or is it a case of wait and see? No, we're hoping, you know, we integrate him into training in the next fortnight or so. Any other injury news ahead of tomorrow's Um no Mikey's got a hip strain, uh Sved. Uh, he's coming back from his groin still. Um bio you know, all those guys are, are pretty close to returning to training, but you know, tomorrow night's probably too soon for them at the minute. Well, yeah. He's fine. He's fine, yeah, he's in the squad tomorrow.